a company we're building an autonomous electric lawnmower for the commercial landscape industry. With a 60 inch mow deck, it's able to, and at seven miles per hour, it's able to mow over three acres per hour. That's a football field in just 20 minutes. That's crazy. So, yeah. so is that, is and, that what I'm looking at behind you? That's, that's her right there. Oh my God. So yeah, we've been working on her for several years now and uh, we're, we're finally to the stage that we're testing her and uh, we're, we're running back and forth. We're actually at a job site right now in Los Angeles where our engineers are gathering a lot of data. And then the plan is to uh, you know, get it out to some R&D partners uh, in July. Amazing. So I guess the question is, what gets you into this? I wasn't sure if you were sitting at a high school football field or if that was your backyard. What, what gets you into Gray's? And how do I get this in my front yard? Because right now, uh, that would definitely help. Well, first thing, you got to get a really big front yard because we're designed for commercial landscaping. So like I say, it can do a, a football field in 20 minutes. It puts so, me in about a minute. It's done in a minute. Yeah, there you go. You get your honeydews done all at once. <laughs> but uh, what got me into it, I worked for a landscape company, Jensen Landscape in the San Francisco Bay Area for 35 years. Uh, we did both landscape installation and landscape maintenance. And I'm always looking at ways to make landscaping more efficient. And that usually comes with reducing labor, uh, the, the labor cost. And so it was a couple of years ago, I was at my local lawnmower shop getting my personal lawnmower sharpened and ready for the spring. And I saw a sign for robotic mowers. And I asked the uh, store manager, you know, what's this all about? I've never heard of this before. He said, yeah, they're really big in Germany and they're starting to take hold in the US. And this was about three years ago. So I asked the store manager, well, where do you have this installed? And so he pointed me out to the Google campus in Sunnyvale where I could see, even though I couldn't see it running, I could see where it mowed and where it had it mowed. And it was kind of like a Roomba for a lawn. So yeah. it was going in random patterns, yeah. fairly small uh, mowing pattern. And, uh, you know, so it mows some areas one or two or three times, other areas it miss all together, but just looked like a bad haircut. But right then and there, I said, man, if somebody could develop a lawnmower that can go back and forth in parallel lines, does not require the guide wire uh, to keep the at the perimeter of the lawn, because that's labor intensive as well, and could make it large enough for a commercial landscape company, they would have something. Well, just a couple months later, uh, one of my members in Vistage turned me on to Buck Jordan with Ma Wavemaker Partners. And, you know, they told me that they were developing just such a machine, a robotic lawnmower for the commercial landscaping company. So that, that's kind of how it got started. I, I talked with Buck, uh, you know, that one thing led to another. And uh, ultimately, I became the CEO of Grace. It's an amazing story. And it looks like it's an electric mower as well, right? We've, you've talked oh, about yes. that a little bit. Absolutely. It's, it's fully electric. It's autonomous, robotic. Uh, it will memorize the perimeters, the outer perimeter of lawn, any interior perimeters like ponds, planting areas, trees, picnic tables. And once it memorizes that, it memorizes it once. And then any graze mower can download that and mow that lawn. How long does the battery last? Like how long does this go out and work in the field? I've got to imagine there's solar in here too, or something that's well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that. We did start with uh, solar panels, but it turned out that, uh, you know, the amount of energy taken, especially by the Modex, uh, eight hours out in the sun, the solar panels would only run it for about 10 minutes. Uh, so right now it's, it's more like uh, an EV where we charge the batteries and uh, you can charge them about eight hours overnight. And, uh, you know, with 110 volt or with 220, you can charge it up in about three hours. And so right now what we're targeting is at least seven hours of operation because, you know, your, your normal uh, landscape crew is out there for at least eight hours and probably an hour to two hours of what we call windshield time, driving from the yard to the first job, first job, second job, second job, back to the uh, yard. And so we want to we have at least seven hours, but we can also increase that battery capacity to get it upwards of 10, 12 hours. So if it's at say a, um, a golf course where maybe they're wanting it to run longer, uh, they'll be able to have that, that opportunity. And also being electric and being autonomous, and it's, it's much quieter than a gas powered mower, uh, it, can, it can operate at night. So in those areas where, uh, where, where, where they're able to, they're, they're able to operate at night and ultimately 24 seven uh, with a quick charge on the 220. 
So, I mean, obviously the golf course area was the first thing that I was thinking of it. To me, it seems super obvious that uh, you've got your landscaping crews that are working on the greens and like all of the the manicuring and that stuff is still probably going to be hand done for the foreseeable future. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure where we are in robotics enough to know that uh, you can manicure Augusta quite yet, but the next year, general, next year. yeah, next year, the, yeah. the general run of things though, I don't see any reason why you couldn't change, you know, it's preset. You're going to do fairway this way. You're going to do this, this way, this, this way. Uh, right. I got to imagine that this saves golf courses a ton of money. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when you look at during the growing season, you know, the fairways, they're mowing them three times a week. Yeah. And, yeah. and you can see, I think you can see pretty well with the, with the mower, we've got the mow deck out in front and that's a rotary mower, so they can they can mow the roughs, the out of bounds areas like that. But for the fairways and the greens, you want a real mower. So one of the mowers that uh, you know is really good for the fairways. So uh, once we finalize this model, we'll be able to have different attachments, like a real mower, uh, yeah. an attachment for aerators, fertilizers, all kinds of different attachments. Because once those perimeters are memorized, you can put on whatever attachment and and take care of the field. This is basically like a commercial version of easy go. Like where I, I'm plugging the batteries in. like I have the, the, the snowblower electric, all my neighbors laughed at me. They were like, haha, you're in Chicago. This is going to be a joke. Right. I was the one laughing at the end of it. I got a third of an acre and the perimeter is, you know, 60 by 40, including sidewalk. I was ripping through it. These guys are like changing oil and the shit's not working <laughs> and the, the starter's right. freezing. Oh. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, I'd say it's easier go because once you've got it all memorized, you just push the button and it'll go. This, uh, so you're raising money on Start Engine right now. Uh, people can go yes. to startengine.com and go to Graze, G R A Z E. Uh, currently, you guys have raised, uh, looks like 1.7 ish, thereabout. That's in this yep. current campaign, you've raised another 3.8 previously before that. Talk to me a little bit about the opportunity. What am I looking at? Yeah, so, you know, from an investment standpoint, you know, we really see a real business case for landscape contractors. Uh, we, we've done a, uh, you know, kind of an analysis of what it costs to run a 60 inch gas powered mower versus the 60 inch graze, and it's saving over 50% of the cost. So not only are you saving on the labor cost, you're saving on the workers compensation insurance, you're saving on like, electricity versus gas. And there, there are just so many aspects that you're saving. I was talking to one of our R&D partners. I have him, you know, look over my spreadsheet. And he says, well, not only are you saving that electricity is cheaper than gas, it also takes, you know, usually two or three guys to go fill up your machinery. And so that's probably at least 20 minutes a day, you know, between the three uh, people just fueling it. Whereas with ours, you're just plugging it in. It fuels. The next day, it's ready to go. So from a business case, we're looking at selling the mower. Right now, we've got it targeted at $30,000 per mower plus $1,000 a month for the robotics as a service. And even when you take that and you uh, depreciate the 30,000 over five years, that's 6,000 a year, plus the 12,000 in RAS, that's 18,000. You can't even pay a person $15 an hour to go mow a lawn. Yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a great business case for landscape companies. And it's a great investment opportunity because two thirds of our pre-orders, two thirds of our revenue is going to be from recurring revenue from the RAS. It's a smart model. And I think you've seen, it's a, a total, you started this way. So I'll go back to the iRobot. Um, it, it, you don't need a, a subscription for iRobot per se, although they do offer different versions of it in your house. But when you're out in the field, it's sort of kind of important and the analytics are a massive importance and the ability to customize and do all kinds of stuff. So I, I totally get why you would have that. And of course, as an investor, I love the idea that a person can basically say, instead of paying five people to be out on the, on the mowers, I'm paying this one SAS that's essentially just going to cover the whole thing. And it's, it could be the equivalent of a hundred people because all it is, is just programming. Um, that's right. And, and when I look at this business, to be totally honest with you, like this is the kind of business I love because it's a foregone conclusion. To me, this is not a question as to whether or not we're going to yeah. see this. That, that's not, I mean, it's not even, right. you're talking that's about putting- no yeah, autonomous cars in the streets. Like if, if you're going to have autonomous cars in the streets, you're sure shit could have autonomous everything out everywhere else because it's a, right. way yeah. less risk. Yeah, and we're oh. only going seven miles an hour. So, you know, we're not, we're not going to get into crashes or anything like that. 
Yeah, no, I, I love it. This is to me a no brainer that there's, that there's a there there and that this is going to be a huge market. And I think, you know, the cool part about your business from a, a retail investor perspective, people who might be listening to the show is the reality is the balance sheet is real simple. If you're a company that is in landscaping and you have a fleet or you're someone who owns a golf course or three golf courses, you're Medina, you re up right. all of your different tools all the time. The minute you have different appendages that go onto this and you can add on the tools and you factor in maintenance costs and you factor in the, the service fees and all this other jazz, it's really easy to be like, this is what it costs to own five grays and subscribe for your thing on the year. And here's the maintenance and the add-ons and here's what it costs currently. It, it's not even yeah. a... Yeah, the, the, the numbers pan out so easily that the business case is is ridiculously simple. So uh, yeah, it's, it, it's pretty fun. And also, you know, we've been talking to, you know, a lot of the top 100 landscapers in the US as oh, well as yeah. you know, small and med middle sized companies. And, you know, a lot of the CEOs, you know, either they own or their, their, their wife owns or their, uh, their husband owns an electric vehicle. And yeah. I start pitching them the idea that, you know, there's a lot less maintenance, repair, and they're like, hey, I get it. I've got an electric vehicle and I never take it into the shop. You don't have spark plugs, you don't have oil, you don't have all the things that go wrong with a gas powered vehicle. And so that's where there's a lot of savings too. And it also reduces downtime. You know, when your mower's not working, your guys aren't out mowing and you're not, uh, you're, you're not getting the revenue because somebody's got to get out there and mow that lawn. I, I totally agree with you. And I, I you know, I, I look at the sales pitch and as a person who drives an electric car, I can't go back. I won't go back. <laughs> like it's See, exactly. You're just one of the ones. Once yeah, you go to an EV, it's like, and especially now that it's becoming more and more prevalent, you know, five years from now, the majority of vehicles on the road are going to be electric. Yeah, it's just that's a given. And and if you look at you know, listen, the, the case study obviously quite small, but I'm I'm quite sure I'm not the only one here. Gets an electric car. I had an electric hybrid. I had the like the i three, so it had like the backup engine that was basically a lawnmower engine, <laughs> right, and it right. would drive me around. Uh, and then upgraded to the Tesla and have literally never looked back. Yeah. And it was so compelling that when I we moved into a house last August in you know Chicago suburbs, and so I'm like, oh, we gotta have a snowblower because, and of course, this winter was crazy. It was 30 inches every day. I swear, I felt like I didn't want to buy a gas powered machine. I didn't want to deal with it. Right. And as soon as I pulled the trigger on the electric one, I was like, oh, did I make the right decision? It was amazing. Doesn't take long. Yeah. It doesn't and take now, long now say, I'm yeah. looking to buy uh, leaf blowers and every other shit that goes into the easy because it just it's so simple and there's no maintenance. And I think that's your sales pitch is like any single person who's ever driven an electric car. Imagine having that simplicity in your workplace. Like it's crazy. Absolutely. And, you know, there, there's a big movement in the landscape industry, you know, you know, also by cities and uh, and corporations to go electric. Yep. So I'm also talking to, uh, you know, a person that's developing a, a trailer. So once you put in your electric uh, blowers, your electric edgers, your electric chainsaws, your electric mower, you plug those into the trailer. And then when you, at the end of the day, you get to the yard, you just plug in the trailer and it automatically charges all the electric equipment. So we're, we're just, we're making it simple. We're working with other people to help us make it simple it's going to totally transform the landscape industry. And that is another foregone conclusion. The trailer to trailer, trailer plug-in, it, yeah. it is so logical that it's not even debatable in my, in my opinion. It's a matter, are you the one? And is this the one? Is this the right time? And I, uh, there's no reason to believe that it's not. It's a beautiful looking machine. Uh, I wish I had a big enough yard for it. <laughs> well, like you said, it'll get yours done in a minute. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it.